Okay, very good morning. It is Friday 16th of August. Hope you are well. Uh, before I get into the, the actual briefing, happy birthday to Jose Stubbs uh, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, top man and former Amplify trader. Uh, got a lot of time for Jose, so uh, happy birthday and enjoy your weekend, mate. Um, getting into what we're gonna discuss then for the briefing, we've got a couple of articles really focused on the, the Fed and what are they gonna do because in a week's time exactly to the day, uh, there's the uh, semi-annual testimony in Jackson Hole from the Fed Chair Powell, which is one of the biggest platforms outside of the regular eight meetings that the Fed holds where the Fed Chair gets to kind of vocalize latest thinking on the likes of uh, interest rate expectations going forward, the health of the economy, and so on. So that's quite a, or well, it is a big deal for markets, particularly at the juncture we're at, when it's uh, this idea of, is there a looming recession on the horizon? And do we subsequently need more action than just the one rate cut being delivered so far? So we'll get into that in a second. Let's just have a quick, before I go on to the headlines, review of the charts and Fairly quiet open, to be honest. There's not really a great deal of major, I'd say, market moving headlines for me to report to you. Uh, very much so, just a continuation of the, the general sentiment. We had a, a firmer close on Wall Street. It's been a, a real quite volatile week, actually. Uh, but pairing back some of the, the hefty losses that were seen uh, in recent sessions, of course, on that day when the Dow fell some 800 points. Um, other assets have uh, similarly stabilized cable continues to kind of claw back some of its recent losses just looking at the center top here uh, with the dollar flat this morning but obviously had some firm retail sales yesterday uh, and some firm data out of the US as well let's not forget retail sales uh, Empire and Philly Fed all coming in slightly stronger than expected uh, so not quite a runaway uh, kind of end of the world scenario that perhaps some of the financial media would have you believe with the inversion of the yield curve that was happening once again earlier this week. That kind of talk has kind of abated at least for the moment. Uh, so I'd say all things being equal, it's a, it's a fairly tepid open uh, and really awaiting the US session because there is really absolutely nothing scheduled for this morning of any type of significance. Um, obvious things still in play, of course. Any updates on the trade side of things? Um, this, of course, was the latest that we heard yesterday, which was talking about that China is preparing tariff response, as Trump sees a Xi call very soon. Uh, nothing really new here than what we were reporting yesterday, but China as well being very sensitive to making sure that the US doesn't poke its nose into the Hong Kong situation that's obviously unfolding at the moment. I believe those protests are now into their their third month so other than that then rather than look at the charts I'll leave that to Sam uh, upon how he views the, the technical setup for the day let's run through the headlines and this is obviously the main one power expected to seek another cut despite strong spending and th this is a reference point of course to to yesterday but um, you would have known that as we have been seeing recently in the US is that given the fact that we've had relatively benign inflationary conditions, but wages have been picking up and unemployment remains particularly low in the US, consumers have been continuing to spend and, and had ability to do so. That's been the one kind of sweet spot, if you like, for the US economy, where otherwise on some of the other more productivity, kind of manufacturing activity-based measures have been slowing, mimicking this global slowdown. So it's kind of been a little bit of an isolated thing here, the, the, the strength of the consumer. And that does bring about a couple of interesting things. So cycling through a couple of different graphics, this is the City Economic Surprise Index for the United States of America. Now this is something we, we look at from time to time and essentially it looks at the so with every piece of economic data uh, of any significance, you have a median expectation. And this is basically an index that derives then, well, how far did it deviate from the mean, in whether it's a positive, a beat, or a miss. And what we've been seeing is that, you know, comparative to where we were about two months ago, when economic data was surprising to the downside, we're now starting to see the reverse. And I guess yesterday was quite an example of that. 
the, the kind of three major headline pieces of data all exceeded expectations. So, you know, in a world where um, I guess market psychology generally is in quite a fragile state, particularly with this emphasis on the indicators coming out of the fixed income market at the moment, uh, this will alleviate, I would think, some of that tension that had been brewing throughout the week, for sure. But that doesn't mean that the market's really shifted completely. It's just, as I said, it's managed to uh, just calm some of the, and alleviate some of those fears. The, the fact is the market is still very confident that the Fed are going to cut at the next meeting on the 18th of September. The market is 100% price for that uh, event to unfold. The idea here is whether they go 25 or 50. So it feels like we're in a bit of a rerun of the last Fed meeting when, if you remember, this got all the way up to 50-50 before then the Fed basically came out and said, we're not going to do 50 in a lesser explicit way. And that bumped it to about 75-25 on the day of the decision. So we're kind of back in that same realm at the moment. Um, again, Obviously, I don't know what the future holds between now and September, but my expectation as of right now, August 16th, is that the Fed uh, will cut 25, not 50. So again, the fact that they didn't go big the first time, I see little reason um, both in their strategy in terms of the increments of cuts and also in terms of the actual economic data and the trade situation. I don't think warrants a, a 50 cut is my personal view at this point. This is the longer term uh, perspective though, and this is looking at what markets expect. So uh, going into 2020 and where will Fed funds be in that point? So here you've got the blue line, which is the, the Fed funds rate, the effective rate. So you can see that was the rate cut. So taking rates down to where they reside at the moment. But the pink line you can see has just been decreasing really ever since we had that crash in markets at the end of last year. So going to the beginning of the year, it just continued to decrease. And um, market expectations are by the time we get into 2020, at the end of that year, you know, rates are going to be tracking at around 1%. So you're looking at about 100 basis points worth of cuts still priced into the market at this point uh, in time. An interesting article I read last night suggested that actually Jerome Powell uh, apparently has spoken to his other Federal Reserve colleagues and said I do not want you making any public appearances uh, the reason why is because he doesn't want any increased conflict between the government and the central bank i.e. we've obviously had Trump being that even this week uh, as has been his pattern highly critical of the fact that any market downside is obviously accountable to the Fed as far as Trump is concerned um, irrespective of that uh, kind of call from Powell on his colleagues Maybe Kashkari didn't get the memo. Um, he said, basically, uh, he's leaning toward further rate cuts. And if I just jump down to the bottom of the article to give you the comment, he said, I am leaning towards the camp of, yes, we need to give more stimulus to the economy, more support. We need to continue the expansion and not allow a, session to, a recession to hit us. Now, very important point here, or two, um, for one, Kashkari is a very well-known dove. He's like the uber dove, if you like. Uh, so this is absolutely unsurprising to hear this type of rhetoric from him specifically. And then two, he is a non-voting member in 2019. So he doesn't get a vote. So despite his views, I think I, don't, I wouldn't expect that to really shake up the market too much. The point being is all of this is leading up to next Friday. Uh, the Jackson Hole Symposium is going to be very important for markets and it will be the main thing I'm sure that I'll be talking uh, uh, about when I deliver the week ahead briefing on Monday morning. Uh, so I think between now and then the markets have really got to wait and then you'll hear from Powell and he will give the definitive latest assessment of what he thinks is the, the correct and prudent course of action. Um, final few points for me to make. Uh, as I said, from the calendar this morning, there is literally nothing coming out um, of significance for UK European markets. So I definitely think, a, again, a US-centric session. Uh, from a US data point, you've got uh, housing starts, building permits, and then you've got University of Michigan. Uh, this is the preliminary reading for August, so typically the more market moving, if, if at all, of the two readings, um, the other being the final reading. So this today is expected at 97.2. 
Uh, and really that would be no shock at all. That would be a matching of a print back to April of 2019. Uh, you know, if you look at the data set of Michigan on a 10 year level, you know, 97.2 uh, would be right up here. So it's still a very high reading uh, in context of the last 10 years or so. So as we saw yesterday, I don't think the consumer sentiment is being a particular crucial factor for policy thinking. And as such, I wouldn't really be looking for much reaction on the back of that. The other things I'll be looking for more so is just generally key technical levels in equity markets, particularly downside given some of the big runs that we've had earlier in the week. And I'll be looking out for any further updates, of course, on the trade side as well. Not that there's anything scheduled, but of course, Twitter and so on. Uh, the final question I wanted to ask, and I would like if you are watching this um, in Trading Live, so put your, um, your answer in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube delayed, then I'd like you to comment below on the video. But this is a graphic of Deutsche Bank shares. And I was just having a look at them because Deutsche yesterday got down to five euros 88. You can see here from a technical perspective, just very loosely, their shares have been responding to around six euros um, back in June, and then they bounced back up to north of seven. But now we've broken that previous area of support from about two months ago. Uh, if I start putting Deutsche on a year to date chart, you know, perhaps you can see that the relevance of that June support a little more. And then if we start looking at a five year chart, you can just see how hammered Deutsche shares have been. If you look at it, you know, even longer term on a max, I mean, they were north of 100 euros back in 2007 pre financial crisis. And again, to reiterate, they're trading below six euros. The question I would like to know is at what level would you buy Deutsche Bank shares? Uh, and obviously, there could well be the idea that maybe you wouldn't want to touch them at all but the common consensus would be that given it's such a stem systemically important financial institution to the working of not germany but the global financial system given how intrinsic deutsche is in to, to lending into nearly every bank of every continent in the world the common belief is, is that they're too big to fail now if you were going to buy deutsche shares at what level is my question would you want to get in so we've just breached six. We're at these all time lows for the stock. Leave a comment on the video. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. OK, that is it from me for today. So let me hand you over to Sam. I'm going to wish you a fantastic weekend. Uh, keep an eye on my Twitter account the weekend. I will distribute the usual calendar main events for the week ahead on Sunday. Thanks very much, guys. <clears throat> Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what you guys all think about Deutsche Bank incredibly uh, down where it is now from even just well, five or so years ago. Um, having a, a quick look over the euro to, to start with, uh, we had those, those comments out from the ECB yesterday which uh, have sort of shot markets a touch and, and the euro finally, it has to be said, it was, it was hovering in that range, wasn't it, 112 to... Uh, 112.50 for, for quite some time getting the break last couple of days and you know decent enough moves to the downside here we have another one of those and, and suddenly we're, we're near the, the lows of the month uh, lows of the year again so uh, worth keeping an eye literally where we're trading now you can see you know, just making all very albeit very briefly a new low for, for the day you could argue that's a bit of a trend line so worth seeing what happens you know can we get that close below here Still a fair bit of time on, on the 15 minute for, for that to happen. Euro pound as well, low of the day as we speak. So Euro just unwinding some of perhaps the strength that we've seen over the last few few days or so. And the dollar is, is starting the day against some of the pairs uh, on the on the front foot. The Aussie and, and Kiwi just over the last 30 minutes or so have, have been drifting down. And uh, the Kiwi actually just you know, catching my eye here, just coming to... Uh, those lower points uh, that we've got just around the S1 today but also you can see just this whole area this you know this zone of, of importance really following the uh, the interest rate decision back on the the seventh we've just been squeezed in around here while there's not necessarily the best trend line in the world or area of support that looks so clean a break of that 
Uh, you've got to imagine there's a, a decent enough push to the downside. As Ant mentioned, that pound has been trying uh, over the last, well, since yesterday morning, really trying to just grind, grind higher. We did get a break of, of that uh, range that we'd been in for, for a while. Um, so similar to the Euro, we're talking about how it's, it's stuck in this range, perhaps waiting for the break either way is, is the way to go. It just so happened it was, was to the upside. Uh, and you can see we, we really we pushed quite significantly higher back to the highs that we had back on the 9th. Uh, just looking at this market now, uh, it'd be worth just having a look to see can we get any of these these kind of trends on here while well, we did get that break through yesterday we never got the close above and we're just testing that now and i have this marked up on uh, my charts uh, as well so i just wanted to see what happens here uh, as well for for this market going into you know the end of the week uh, will be important can we get back above yesterday's high but also this trend line and we could perhaps see a, you know a decent enough push you know positive headlines over the weekend and suddenly we've now seen uh, the worst of the 120 for a while just putting it back onto that weekly chart i know uh, we talked about this really from a couple of weeks ago just the importance of this trend line break now obviously we are quite far away from that you know this would be around 124 still give or take uh, but certainly in that uh let's bring in that 120 here certainly in the medium term if we can get any push up to there that's going to be a real key level uh, for, for sure that I would be focusing on and also you can see it would come in uh, back in the, the 2017 March lows by the time it could get up there's a really key level that I'd be focusing on still kind of in no man's land really uh, if we were to get the opportunity to have broken to the downside you've got to imagine 120 would have come quite quickly uh, but at the moment I think the pound to, to the upside does make a, a bit of sense certainly uh, the euro pound will bring this in now uh, you can see just the last few days having uh, turned a corner after being uh, under pressure for, well, just so long, so long. You can see that move there. S&P, I want to bring this into to picture now as well. And, and we this time yesterday, we were talking about the importance, and I'll just remove today's trading, the importance of that pivot and that low and the, uh, the previous low before we broke through. We we're talking about how it's a almost a, a seven-point zone. And, and we came up there around one o'clock and it, the, the buyers just couldn't take over and we drifted back down but as you can see we're coming back into that level now it's massively massively important where we close the day and the week uh, for for this market can we get back above there or is that going to be the key resistance point and we start to drift uh, lower to to the downside so really key really key if you want a line in the sand that, that's it there uh, to the downside, you can see we, we we tried a couple of times yesterday to get below uh, 22, which was the low we had back on the 7th, and we just couldn't get that close below. Really key level, uh, as you can see. Uh, those are your your points that I would have marked up today. And, and that, that calendar, as Ant was mentioning, is, is pretty quiet uh, in the morning. Uh, so, you know, keeping an eye on this into the afternoon will be uh, will be certainly one to, to have a, an eye on. Quick look at, at gold. We saw obviously some dollar strength against the euro yesterday, uh, and the dollar strengthened elsewhere, but not really enough to, to move gold around. And uh, was speaking to uh, some of the traders about you know if we can get. You know, where I had a trend line on. Where was it? From these highs here, I was like, if we can get above that. Uh, yeah, I was saying this around four o'clock. So if we can get above this, there could be the opportunity to get long. You can see it, it did go higher, but we haven't really confirmed that break above. While you would have obviously you know, got a nice trade there, uh, 11 or so bucks, we have come back. We've found support again, with, but we are now on the other side of it. Uh, so certainly shorter term, if you are looking to, to get long gold, you would want to, us, us to get back above there and, pre, and the previous low of the day, which coming in around 1527. To the downside, a lot of support. A lot of support can be found uh, just below where we're, we're trading in the S1. You can see all these wicks here. Incredible zone uh, around 1520, where we finished the week, along with the previous highs of yes, uh, Wednesday morning, would be important as well. So we're still massively elevated here. Uh, you could argue there's a couple of trend lines about to come into play as well. Let's have a quick look to see. There you go, look, another break of that. Uh, so gold, certainly in the morning, 
looking bearish until we were to get to around this level 15 17 uh, you know, bullish above the previous low and then suddenly uh, we are looking towards those highs but just worth you know being a bit patient here is the dollar just trying to perhaps strengthen uh, a touch and uh, we'll have a quick look over at dollar yen which we haven't focused on too much recently uh, but that's uh, another market which is uh, worth having a, a look at today just getting squeezed from both directions um, so certainly maybe more into the afternoon worth having a look what's what's going on here and, and again where we finish the week for for this market will be pretty important but you can see over the last couple of weeks or the month should we say uh, we are still relatively choppy there seems to be a lot more um, you know in these big down days for equities uh, the the yen side hasn't exactly strengthened massively so for this market here the dollar still wants a, a bit of it uh, which I found quite interesting um, so yeah worth, worth having a, a look at that into the afternoon quick look over uh, at the DAX because obviously we, we're talking about that level yesterday in equities in the US just sort of how important that is and the NASDAQ is at that level now uh, and uh, you know while the, the Dow Jones is yeah just trying to break through it as well I'll be keeping an eye what the DAX does which got up to there early morning but never really came back since Obviously, that euro comment helped push the DAX higher. So, you know, if we were to get another push towards this R1 yesterday's high, previous low of the 13th, uh, US equities may get the, the run from that to go earlier than the afternoon. So keeping a, a close watch on what the DAX does uh, around the R1 yesterday's high, should it get there. Have a quick look over at oil to, to wrap it up for the morning and obviously the briefing. You can see its R1 has been the level of interest today along with yesterday's high and some resistance we had back on Wednesday. Good line in the sand for the bulls and bears to, to have a go at protecting that if you're uh, of the, the idea that we have to or we are going to come lower. That's a uh, a pretty important point and we're now looking to come into this new range if you like and I'm just gonna drag that a bit higher where certainly other than the, the push that we had on uh, Tuesday and then the reaction to the downside which cancelled it you could argue between 53.50 and 55.50 we're now in this uh, two dollar range where you know price is pretty contained other than those two days so the downside where we had on the 12th which is also previous high on the 9th and we just can't quite get confirmed above there so from an intraday perspective but also looking more for next week I'll be interested to see what happens if we can get above 55.50 and for me that would be a pretty positive finish on the week and even going back to the last few trading days uh, from Monday you can see that 55.50 of importance uh, and the downside as well. So really important $2 zone uh, to keep an eye on for, for me uh, this week. Worth keeping an eye on what the DAX does uh, as equities in the US also approach those higher levels. Pound, I think it'd be important. Can we get above that trend line that I had on uh, to finish the week? Dollar yen worth keeping an eye on in the afternoon. Gold just a touch bearish this morning until we get to 15, 17 perhaps, and the euro not looking too strong uh, at all. Uh, just um, another shout out to, to Stunner Stubbs. Hope you're well. Happy birthday. Hope you're enjoying your holidays. I uh, hope everyone else has a, a great weekend uh, and I'll catch you uh, next week.